I never forget the day my dad come home from work on a Friday and he says to mum, it was a few weeks before my 15th birthday, he said, get a crib canned water bottle and a pair of pit birds, he starts work on Monday. And the boss in them days, we were governed by a whistle. If your whistle went, there'd be no work the next day. Horrible. I was an apprentice milliner at the time and we got the one week's annual leave. I got very, very low wages. When you were required to work Saturday morning and in addition to that, work overtime, well, you're a non-event as a father because you weren't there. And at those times, the married women were not given permanent employment. So very, very soon after my arrival in Australia, I was already in the battle for the equal rights for the married woman. Now those conditions, they were awful that we worked under in those days and we knew they were wrong and we fought hard to do something about it. We had to fight the boss tooth and nail for everything we got. We got nothing without sweat, blood and tears. Not one single employer that I approached ever said, I'd like to give it to you, Frank. Never. It was all by sacrifice of workers. You fought for each other, the same as the war. You went over there, you depend on your mates, and your mates looked after you. There's none of this buggering about today which the government's trying to do. Apart from wages, there's something that's equally, if not more important, and that are your conditions. My dad fought for conditions, and his father fought for conditions. They handed them down, and they're the right of the people. The people are there, and no one has got the right to give workers' conditions away. It's absolutely un-Australian to increase the working hours, to take away the benefit from family, that which John Howard is doing. It's hard to imagine anything more un-Australian. When I came to Australia, I noticed that it is a very special country. The country when people care one for another, when people help one another, there is certain solidarity and cooperation. I'm afraid that what is happening now may undermine those feelings. Although the work on the dock had been completed without a hitch, the position on the general industrial front was far from stable. We won it through the unions, to saying to the union, we need more annual leave, and the unions taking up the fight on your behalf. Union uh, is everything. Everything has been won through mateship. Harm one, harm all. That was the thing. If one's down, well, you, you, you pick him up. The same as the war, we fought for it and won it. And we'll win this one. There's no way to Howard and his company was going to downgrade us. We want upgrading, not downgrading. I see absolutely no reason why John Howard brought this in at all. There, he tells us what a wonderful economy we have. Well, good, OK. Who's helped to shape that economy? The workers. They should have their fair share too. Why shouldn't we be the lucky country? We've fought for it. Our men have poured overseas for it. A majority are still overseas with headstones on them. They'd be turned their grave today to find out what Howard's trying to do with us today. It's a catastrophe for the country and it's a catastrophe for workers. I'm worrying now that my granddaughter will be in much more difficult position because all these rights which we fought for and won are now going to go overboard. It'll only be broken and saved for generations to come if the trade union movement remains united and all workers unite behind the trade union movement. United you stand divided you fall and of course you do if you're united you mateship and you rely on one another. Australia is special through these workers that fought on and fought on and never give up. I'm really proud of what my grandmother did. I think that she achieved a lot and that a lot of ordinary people helped to make Australia the country that it is today and make it a fair place. And it makes me angry to think that we could be losing what people like my grandmother fought for. I think this is going to, be ha is going to have a, a dire effect on our way of life and what we're used to. Our weekends, our fun, being with our families. And I think the Australian way of life is going to change dramatically. There's 150 years of struggle, bloodshed, heartbreak to win the conditions that they're enjoying today. And it's up to them 
to safeguard them because once they're gone, they'll be gone forever this time.